a follower of Christ's character. Jesus said for in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as angels of God in heaven. Matthew 22 30, the angelic appearance of angels is that of a purified nature, and they gain freedom from all guilt, evil, and pollution during the resurrection. And generally, they won't necessarily be the kind that has read the Bible before the resurrection. However, they do come out graceful, and their goal to become an angel does start on day one. Angels wouldn't be related to one another because all individuals don't come out the same. They won't necessarily be the smartest kid in a classroom, there are angels from all backgrounds. God's angels do dwell in heaven they live for God, and they are blameless, humble, and righteous. Often they messenger for God. But most angels don't seek wealth first they acknowledge the Father's rewards and riches can lead to greed. Though trial tests can be overwhelming an angel's goal is to remain blameless to be declared righteous. They can't seek revenge once the resurrection in their life starts to take place. Understanding the overall goal above anything else empowers their determination. High priest prophets, on the other hand, seek wealth as a stronghold. They understand wealth comes with power and so does greed, but men accept wealth differently from women. Women usually seek elegant things to make them appear and feel beautiful, in which most times they spend more than expected. Royalty comes to either and both are first proven to obey the Father. While they acknowledge righteousness is found in the fruit and vegetable fields, and judgment takes place in the wilderness. Both are to reap harvest till the ends of the earth. When you become an angel or prophet you are to sow good seeds of harvest. Neither angels nor prophets come from a specific race, all do come from the human race. God typically analyzes the overall perspective of obedience above the trial test experiences. To have a life filled with abundance is why you are called to become an angel or prophet. Jesus wanted the last to come first. After you are convinced that you are the last and that you are worthy. You will become Christ-like for coming together to heal nations. But you are to seek to become changeable. Heaven-worthy, angelic-seeking person versus an earthly idol-loving person. Beatitudes. The comforted. The heavenly. The inheritors. The meek. The merciful. The pure in heart. The peacemakers. The righteous. They all stand for the truth. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Matthew 5:12. Be led by the heavenly spirit because it isn't acceptable to the Father to be led by the flesh. So, acknowledge putting on a renewed flesh and becoming transformed to do his will. The laws you cannot commit to in the weak flesh. The old flesh is earthly of material things full of sin. And the renewed flesh is for God's glory full of heavenly things, pleasing and righteous. Through the renewed flesh Christ lives in you with the spirit in which you are led. Blameless the word of God allows you to become guiltless and innocent. Because you are deserving of an angelic, godly, and righteous lifestyle. Deliverance the Father will deliver you from trial tests, so don't be lured by an enemy while waiting for deliverance. If you want instant deliverance seek it wholeheartedly. Guidance with direction, in this contemporary world, the Father guides like a loving parent. When working miracles for God he embraces and protects you from harm's way. He uses miracles to help guide you. Though you witness miracles every day, you are here on earth through the birth miracle. He does allow diversity with discipline when you are willing to learn a lesson from mistakes. If you don't accept his guidance, he will let you go your own way. Forgiveness once you turn from darkness into light, through faith you inherit the ability to ask the Father's forgiveness and receive it. Therefore, you can forgive yourself and others. Empowerment Self-awareness and spiritual empowerment hold the key to freedom and raising your status in society. Economic independence and financial security no doubt do form self-confidence for anyone. Empowerment and perseverance promote long-term goal-setting, motivation, and overcoming obstacles. All of which establishes love and peace. 7 Forms of Spiritual Empowerment 1. Anointing equals healing. 2. Authority equal patience. 3. Direction equal identity. 4. Guidance equal acceptance. 5. Miracle equal righteous good work. 6. Reward equal honor. 7. Vision equal knowledge. Empower to impact when empowering to impact the Father's guidance, love, and values provide gifts to save the lost. Having said that, he is alive in people today not only through biblical knowledge but as well as telecommunications. With enthusiasm, excitement, joy, praise, and songs, fulfilling his purposeful plan provides great hope. Nowadays we people have more technology than ever before to impact nations on a mega level which is epic. Empowering to impact, enables healing, restoration of life and Earth's natural resources. And so, give God both glory and honor for them all. People you impact may ask these questions. 1. Can I become hopeful through the impact because I am a weak person? 2. Will the empowerment help me guide others to be faithful? 3. How can I use the spirit of fruitfulness in my life to impact? 4. Can I become a fruitful person with talents? 5. 
what if I can't see the vision God has for me? 6. How do I get the courage and willingness to keep going? 7. Is the Father forgiving and generous? Gifts and honor the Father estimates there will be profits from talents as first fruits. God was able to visualize Abel from a righteous perspective and visualized Cain from an unrighteous perspective. Another reason you honor is to avoid the curse that comes with not doing so. Why? It shows you aren't being rebellious, to his commands of obedience to the Bible. It shows you are his faithful servant. It shows your humbleness to complete any mission he sends you on. It shows your uttermost highest responsible hand when it comes to the inheritance, he has in store for you. It shows your stewardship. It shows the kids they won't be neglect throughout eternity. It shows the kids how to become responsible with others watching. It reveals the reapers who haven't acknowledged living sacrifices, but need help understanding why living rather sinful sacrifices pays off as honorable. It proves to God miracles can be worked through you. Today, tithes, or tithing, are normally paid in cash, checks, debit cards, or stocks. In the US preachers continually preach about tithing. When you honor the Father first his benefits provide you with first class values. He will deliver you from webs of destruction and forgive your sins. Enabling you to access tools for the healing of cancers and diseases, and enable you to remain blameless. Through his biblical knowledge, he empowers you with loving kindness to have tender mercy on others. However, you are to use humble words of wisdom, so he does acknowledge your need for the resurrection. But once you hide tithes from the talents of first fruits from him, he then hides your inheritance just as long as you hide the first fruits from him. Eventually, he takes the talents away, and most people learn this the hard way. It is a gift and honor for believing and obeying. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive all our iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 103 5 Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all our increase, so, shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Proverbs 3 10 When we honor God, he doesn't judge how much we spend on clothes because we are worthy of riches. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Psalm 104 1 Honor the word honor is spelled honor in the Bible as a noun, and it means to esteem, value, or greater respect. To honor someone is to value them greatly, or highly respect them with esteem. The Bible urges you to express esteem and honor toward certain adults, father, mother, the elderly, and those of authority. God is superior over all creatures on earth and in heaven. Though he entrusts his authority to others it still belongs to him. Glorification, God be the glory, glory to God and God gets all the glory once you become a witness of judgment, trial, and tribulation. After deliverance through salvation, this is when you can visualize God's glory. The Father created you, and so he will renew your actions, character, praise, and words. Through exaltation expressions for the heavenly spirit of God, we acknowledge he has given us a more splendid form of life. Thy people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation, I the Lord will hasten it in his time. Isaiah 60 22 Justification faith is your proof and reason for the circumstance of following the heavenly spirit of God, it is the explanation. We all are sinners in need of salvation. Once you have been justified through faith, you will have peace through Jesus. Justification through faith also provides an opportunity for all mankind to be saved and still upholds the law everyone has broken at one time or another. You are justified through his 1. Blood 2. Faith 3. Forgiveness 4. Grace 5. Propitiation 6. Righteousness 7. And your redemption 8. Living Sacrifices when people see the sign of wonders how you overcame, they too can feel justified by the truth. If you have to lie about signs of wonders, you aren't justified through faith. When a person is justified, they are absolved, freed from blame, and declared guiltless. And generally, the sin has been forgiven. Leadership in a crisis, the leader forms a strong organization that can model the product of the legacy. One that can withstand the fiery darts of hell. The legacy of the leader's crafted workmanship is deployed, once the person puts his slash her organization into a position to do great things. Purpose it is the desired goal whereas you are called to effectively deploy and reason for order. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Proverbs 6.23 Repentance during prayer you express deep sorrow for sin based on scriptures then ask God's forgiveness. 
it is a form of showing remorse that consists of a change of action, heart, and thoughts in the word of God and self. And sympathetically you don't go back to living the same sin again. Sanctification to be made holy, and be set apart as productive. A purification that involves the body, mind, and soul to become Christ-like. In which you are free of sin while walking in the Spirit of God. All to deploy a deeper understanding of spirituality. Spirit of fruitfulness when you are filled with the heavenly spirit their evidence fruits of the spirit are in your life. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such, there is no law. Galatians 5,22-23, once you live in the spirit you walk of the spirit. What is faithfulness? 1. A conviction about something. 2. Fidelity or trustworthiness. Growing fruit can help increase faithfulness, because after planting the fruit, you have to wait and watch it grow. It is a process that will test your patience and trust, in which relying on faith will get you through the rough times. And once you successfully grow the fruit, you are more likely to encourage others to apply faith to their lives. What is gentleness? 1. The proper balance in life, a center between two extremes. 2. It is to have stability and steadiness that will not move or waver. If you put a handle with a care label on a person, it would probably be ignored. Although words and actions damage wounds every day, healing and restoration of the human heart is a slow, difficult process. What is goodness? 1. It is doing the right thing for the right person. 2. It means something that pleases the Father. 3. God is good, fatherly, forgiving, generous, heavenly, and pure. What is joy? 1. Full of rest. 2. Having hope. 3. Love rejoicing. 4. Someone cheerful and excited. 5. An inward attitude that has God as its object and source. Joy is the one thing enemies want to steal from you. When a person is experiencing joy, this is during the time they are ready to overcome trial tests. This is also during the same time the person remains optimistic about things to come. Sometimes it can be contagious, and so the enemy looks for ways to rob you of joy. Just say, I won't let them steal my joy, and I will get through the rough times. The old quote can be used repeatedly, so don't let them steal your joy. Experience the joy. What is long-suffering? 1. Financial trouble. 2. Harvest for food. 3. Health issues. 4. Pressure at work. 5. Problems with the kids. 6. Shaky marriage. 7. Homelessness. Long-suffering is the trial test the Father uses to measure whether you are worthy of inheritance. So, don't blame God, stand for obedience daily throughout trial tests. Stay focused on increasing talents to overcome obstacles. Talents will enable glory, praises, and victories. And fruitfulness can involve using your talents. What is love? 1. Love is the blossom that produces fruit. 2. Love can be expressed through actions, praise, songs, and words. 3. Love can be expressed through the heavenly spirit of God within you. What is meekness? 1. Patience through long-suffering. 2. Naturally submissive. 3. Humble and gentle through trial circumstance. People are meek love being a servant of Jesus Christ. Meek people grow in Bible study, church, prayer, and Sunday school. What is patience? 1. Patience is the ability to accept delay or disappointment graciously. 2. Patience is the ability to continue pressing on and remain steadfast under strain. 3. Patience is a calm endurance God who is in control. What is peace? 1. Peace through mutual respect for others and safety which threatens you. 2. The absence of confusion. 3. Peace is getting to the point. 4. Peace is having calm forgiveness of sin. You need to be in a forgiving mood to acknowledge there is peace. Exercise peace by asking God's forgiveness daily, to feel the comfort of peace. What is temperance? 1. Temperance is the ability to do things in moderation. 2. Temperance is the ability to control actions, thoughts, and words. 3. Temperance is the ability to acknowledge evil as a weakness. Temperance makes the Spirit of God say no to my overindulging tendencies. And say yes when it is time to face fears, when I don't feel like doing what I should. It is an internal struggle between flesh and spirit, to not allow my natural, earthly desires, lusts, to win out. Submission to God in James 4,6-10 It explains that desires prevent you from submitting. Desires are the controlling force that creates a war between God's and your willpower to do what's morally right by others. While this warfare creates battles between you and others, controlling desires allow you to defuse warfare battles. The Bible says angels are to submit to God, children are to submit to parents, employees are to submit to employers. Everyone is to submit to elders, people of authority, and one another. And everyone is to submit to God. Don't allow pride to control your life. This is how you can live for God, and have peace too.
Temptation Jesus lived in the flesh as we live in the flesh, and Satan tempted him over and over again. The three temptations were selfishness, compromise, and popularity. Try not to be lured nor entice, if someone asks you to do a certain thing don't line up with the word of God. Tell them, no I fear the Father. Not too many people use those words enough. Willpower control natural impulses, so they don't become irresistible or non-resisted impulses. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down, and without walls. Proverbs 25 28, self-control over the soul is embodying a righteous significant approach in everything you do and say. Review of favorable and honorable topics. Heavenly Spirit of God the Holy Ghost is a person a part of the Trinity, which is made up of three-dimensional but distinctive persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost who are all Jesus Christ. The following verses give a beautiful picture of the Trinity in the Bible. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus, direct our way unto you. 1 Thessalonians 3 11, and the Trinity will remain the same until there is a new living God. It represents both love and holiness with a pure heart eternally. Followers of Christ then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, and follow me. Matthew 16 24. How to become a good follower of Christ. 1. Acknowledge the Father as your master. 2. Acknowledge the world as you being a light. 3. Commit to following Jesus until a new earthly God appears then all will follow him. 4. Develop a righteous servant mentality. You ought to have a mentality of intelligence that says, I am a righteous servant of Jesus. 5. Judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment. John 7 24. 6. Acknowledge fruitfulness as a means to a youthful appearance. When people are fruitful, they grow fruit, eat fruit, share fruit, and increase in human numbers. 7. When the Father gives you, talents bring back the first fruits, so he makes you ruler of many things. This is how to grow with his guidance and receive an abundance of blessings. Questions about Jesus. 1. What did Jesus die for? A. Breaking traditions. B. Divine promises. C. His inheritance. D. Human sin. E. Powers of the resurrection. F. Powers to heal the sick. G. After having lived 70 or 112 years, it was time. H. So man and womankind can live life more abundantly. 2. Who beat Jesus, and were they ever his enemies? 3. Where was Jesus beaten to near death? 4. Why does the Bible say he will come back in spirit if he is still here in the spirit? 5. Why is righteousness a gift from God? 6. Why do believers think a resurrection can only take place in an afterlife? 7. Why is the kingdom of God an inheritance? 8. Do any Gentiles exist today? 9. After death do you believe the immortal man's spirit goes to heaven? Successful follower of Jesus will A. Obey God's word. B. Trust the Father is in charge. C. Walk in faith. D. Serve where you are. Characteristics of Jesus' servant. 1. A giving servant. 2. A humble servant. 3. A prayerful servant. 4. A submitting servant. And he said, Now also let it be according to unto your words, he with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Genesis 44 colon 10. What are blessings with grace? It is a gift of favor that comes from God, grace is God giving you blessings that are deserving. The biblical knowledge is offered through God's grace, and they are blessings you deserve. With Jesus' grace, you receive eternal life on earth, a blessing that is so deserving. Mercy is the Father withholding judgment that you gracefully deserve. Due to the favor of the Father's mercy, you ought to avoid the judgment of God's wrath, because through it he condemns sin. So, don't remain an evildoer. Though you deserve all these things, biblical knowledge, eternal life on earth all while receiving favor and mercy. No one ought to tell you that you don't deserve either. We all will suffer trial tests over time. Who is grace given to? All. 1. The sinner. 2. The lost souls. 3. The believers. 4. The dead in Christ. 5. The follower of Christ. 6. The servant of Jesus Christ. Why is grace given to the believer? 1. To welcome a child of God, the newcomer. 2. To perform the righteous works of God. 3. To lead others to Christ. 4. To walk in faith acceptable and pleasing to the Father. How to exercise grace? 1. In faith in Jesus Christ, talk and walk while reading the Bible daily. 2. In righteous good works. 3. In daily prayer. 4. In pure, sanctification. You need the grace of Jesus to walk holy, the body is weak and the soul is prone to stray away. How to show grace to others? 1. A thank you when needed show grace and gratitude toward others. 2. Acknowledge your language with grace, 
don't use the real bad words. 3. Apologize with grace, learn to say I'm sorry, by asking forgiveness. Do it quickly. 4. Forgive with grace, accept their apology graciously. 5. Grace with compassion toward others show an attitude of genuine concern. 6. Graceful presence, be with someone in a time of grief. 7. Respond with grace, in a calm spirit, and smile when others respond with criticism. 8. Show gracefulness, use gentle and kind words. 9. Walk in grace, help someone in some small way. You receive salvation through faith. One aspect of salvation is called justification. The act by which you are declared just, righteous, before the Father. How do you receive salvation? 1. Acknowledge being a sinner. 2. Ask to be reborn again. Practice daily for spiritual growth. 1. Pray, you talk to the Father. 2. Watch for signs and wonders, the Father talks to you. 3. Witness, you talk to others about God's experiences of the Bible and the trial tests you have overcome. How do you exercise faith? 1. Accept baptism. 2. Believe in the resurrection. 3. Become purified from cancer, diseases, and sin. 4. Once you become a servant of God, you are also a follower of Jesus. 5. Once you become a follower of Jesus, you are also a servant of God. 6. Read the Bible daily. 7. Walk in faith and stand for obedience. Why all the above are necessary? 1. It is a gift based upon free will. 2. By nature, all are born spiritually dead. Not only are you justified through grace, but also through 1. Acceptance of guidance. 2. Confession of sin. 3. Faith. 4. Purification. 5. Resurrection. 6. Works. All this is determined by justification through God. What are the gifts from God? 1. To become an angel of God. 2. Earnings. 3. Health. 4. The resurrection. 5. To become a servant of God. 6. Talents. 7. All things on earth and heaven. What is a righteous person? The appearance is that of a humble and meek person. A person who is acceptable and pleasing to God, and they try to live up to his standards. They allow the spirit of Jesus to live within them. An honest person learns biblical knowledge and stands for truths. They fear the Father, not the man. And they have faith in all things eternal for God. They acknowledge a fair judgment involves, discipline, forgiveness, grace, mercy, and moral character. Also, they acknowledge judgment takes place in the forest slash wilderness, and righteousness is found in the fruit and vegetable fields. They even acknowledge angels are to reap an eternal harvest till the ends of the earth. Most importantly they do everything for the glory of God and give God all the glory. Why is the resurrection known for being two events? According to Einstein two people observing the same event, in the same way, could perceive, the singular event occurring at two different times depending upon their distance from the event in question. These types of differences arise from the time it takes for light to travel through space. Since light does travel at a finite and ever constant speed, an observer from a more distant point will perceive an event as occurring later. However, the event is occurring at the same instant in time thus, time is dependent on space. 11 Benefits from the Resurrection 1. Ability to overcome trials and tribulations precociously. 2. Acceptable of biblical knowledge. 3. Acceptance from God. 4. Become first fruit a living sacrifice. 5. Better communication skills. 6. Body, flesh, less defile and healthier. 7. Capable of becoming an angel seeking reaper. 8. Doors open up. 9. Fruitfulness through renewing of the mind. 10. Enable to accomplish and achieve the dreams and goals of destiny. 11. Enable to seek and receive an inheritance. 12. Stress free. Below is an example of how arrogance can leave you broke, naked, or even dead. The same example applies to God's Word, Bible, Kingdom, Earth, and the Resurrection. The Resurrection is a gift for acknowledging all understanding, exercising patience, and obedience. This does require acknowledgement of God's laws. Knowledge assets, items of ownership convertible to cash. Knowledge liability, items owed, debts or obligations the state or quality of being liable. Arrogance equals credit, debt owed to someone for lack of ignorance to knowledge. Doesn't acknowledge or apply it. Innocent equals debit pay as you go and don't owe anyone. You understand the biblical meanings and use them wisely. Once you become incorruptible, you are to remain. 1. It could take place before your seven-year tribulation start. 2. It could take place at the midpoint three and a half years into your tribulation. 3. It could take place during your second half, and before meeting with the Spirit of Jesus midway in the air. Remember you will be in spirit as well. 4. 
it could take place at the end of your seven-year tribulation. God's Higher Values 1. Eternal Life, I will seek an inheritance through the Bible and the Kingdom of God. 2. Finances, I will not let material things of this world control my life. 3. Home, I will make it a priority to keep respect for the Father in my home. 4. Integrity, I will keep my moral character in check. 5. Ministry, I will pursue personal spirituality to build up the body of Christ. 6. Spiritual discipline, I will seek divine guidance through the Bible and walk in the Spirit continually. 7. Relationships, I will honor God with my body, mind, and soul and love my neighbor as myself. 8. Transformation, from a sinner saved by grace through his image. Achieving success today involves analyzing issues from these nine perspectives below. How to exercise extra leadership. 1. As a contributor to the needs of others, they contribute their talents to help build others up. 2. As a goal setter to benefit long term wise they set workable goals. 3. As an inventor of things, they invent ways others can become compassionate about. 4. As a mentor, they show compassion for others' needs. 5. As an organizer, they are organized in all other areas. 6. As a peacemaker, they get heard. 7. As a teacher, they are attentive to progress. 8. As a servant, others serve them. 9. As a visionary, they employ other visionaries. All the above require good listening skills and may require serving others. The unlimited good character is a faithful and fruitful healer. Don't hide. 0 1. Your blessings, and don't hide hope. 0 2. Your emotions, but do hide the bitterness. 0 3. Your gifts, but do hide wants and desires. 0 4. Your glory, but do hide hatred. 0 5. Your image, but do hide mystery. 0 6. Your intelligence, but do hide cray, cray. 0 7. Your power, but do hide greed. 0 8. Your praises, but do allow others to shine. 0 9. Your prayers, but do give God the glory of all things. 10. Your resurrection, but don't look for the afterlife. Acknowledge, eternity starts today. 11. Your talents, but do share with others in need. 12. Your smile, it's the Father's glory. 13. Your sins, God saves wicked for evil. 14. Your victory, shows perseverance. 15. Your works or it will one day become a pardon without grace. 16. God's presence in your life, others can deceive you. 17. The word of the Bible, with it you achieve a victory. Jesus' favorable topics. He spoke about which individuals to seek to witness to, the living lost and sinner. Both can be classified as the same type of individuals. 1. The dead in Christ. 2. He valued the lost souls. Jesus talked about two everlasting worlds, both can be classified as the same type of world. 1. The church age. 2. Eternity. Heaven on earth if you servants of Jesus want to proclaim his presence in your life. Acknowledge his throne is in heaven, and the earth is his footstool he rests here. Heaven and earth are where God is as the heavenly spirit. Isaiah 66 colon 1, embrace the heaven on earth, so others can feel worthy of living an eternal life.